Uh, first of all, huge apologies for the late arrival actually. But Spice Jet is to blame. I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, uh, not to blame there actually. Uh, I guess enough has already been spoken about solar pumping, so I'm not too sure how much value do I bring to the table. So what I'm going to do is just basically talk about our experiences uh, mostly in Bihar. And maybe at the end of it, you know, we can take a few questions and I think that might be more uh, engaging and interactive way to kind of, you know, uh, get everyone on the same page. Uh, we are essentially a startup actually, you know, I mean, not even two years old. So this company was actually conceived uh, in 2010 at uh, the Kellogg School of Management. Me and my batchmate, we've been, you know, thinking about, you know, doing something in the clean tech space and uh, we thought that, you know, solar is very exciting to be uh, in, in India. And, uh, you know, we came down, we saw, you know, there's a tons of euphoria around, uh, you know, the national solar mission had just come into being and we thought that, okay, let's just uh, explore ways in uh, which we could also bring some value to the table. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of brainstorming, we did a lot of ground legwork around, you know, exactly trying to identify areas which were clearly underserved. Because all the talk was mostly around the, the power plants, you know, the megawatt scale EPA based projects which were, you know, set up in remote locations and they were selling power to the grid. We thought that that concept was a little flawed, especially in a place like uh, India where, you know, the PME losses are upwards of 40%. So anyways, you know, one of, the, one of the metrics we used was the impact evaluation, which was more around, you know, what is the underserved segment and also in terms of the sustainability of the business idea. So we realized, you know, one of the things we wanted to look at was the on-grid, the off-grid, which you just talked about. But within off-grid, you know, most of the talk was around solar lighting, for instance, you know, solar lattes or cook stores. All of these initiatives are mostly, uh, you know, towards improving productivity, enhancing productivity. No one was really looking at, uh, uh, you know, in a mainstream way, you know, I believe uh, Auroville has done a lot of work in the past, but I, I think the last five, seven years, there hasn't been much action in the water pumping space, so to speak, in India. Uh, but pumping, we felt, uh, had a direct impact on a farmer's uh, income potential. And we felt that, you know, instead of, you know, us trying to push products around solar pumping, there was a very natural uh, pull uh, on the demand side uh, for a solution like this. So we thought, you know, it made a lot of uh, sense and we felt that, you know, instead of trying to enhance productivity, let's just try to improve the farmer's income. And, you know, once the income is improved or augmented, you obviously have that additional uh, money to be spent on either sanitation or education or whatever else. So I, we felt that fundamentally this was a more powerful idea. And that's how we kind of, you know, went around uh, creating a company around this solar company. Uh, this is what I was talking about, you know, the last two years uh, that we've spent in Bihar. And, you know, uh, it's been quite a revelation, you know. I've, I've been in India all my life and uh, I think the last two years have made me realize how little I knew about my own country. Uh, I really felt sorry for my colleagues at, in the US because I've been painting a very different picture about uh, how a city dweller's life in India is and how untrue or you know far from reality that is uh, from even you know, the actual India uh, as we see in Bihar and in UP and other places. But if you look at a farmer's p &L statement, the cost for power required for irrigation is actually the single largest component now. And the reason for that is that electricity, while at least on paper in theory it's subsidized or free, it is largely unavailable or non-existent for most part. Uh, so which means the other alternative for farmers is diesel generation uh, or DG based uh, pump sets. Which obviously, you know, we all know that you know diesel prices have only one direction to go, which is north. There is there isn't any other uh, uh, you know way about it. So so much so that in Bihar at least, you know, I can speak about Bihar because we've had most of our experiences from that state. Uh, agriculture is now more or less seen as an economically unviable activity. It's losing flavor. You know, most people who are actually landholders don't, you know, practice agriculture themselves. They mostly, you know, rent out land or whatever to farmers who want to kind of, you know, make their ends meet in some ways. Uh, so we thought that, you know, there's a very interesting proposition. We actually should look at, you know, saving the cost on irrigation because these savings directly translate to the farmer's bottom line. And again, you know, that the whole cycle starts around, you know, him seeing more value in agriculture and kind of, you know, uh, uh, putting more efforts toward it. So we said, you know, solar pumping is a great option. Um, we we're trying to put up a video here, though we have an installation, um, Amit from Rotomai has been kind enough to help us with that. But uh, for those who've never seen a pump, I believe most of you have. I'm going to try to put this video on if it works. That's fine, we can probably assist. 
Yeah. So all the fancy stuff aside, I just feel that if the economics still doesn't make sense, I think the entire idea falls flat. And if you look at the economics, it's actually very compelling. Uh, what we've done here is actually, you know, and you know, it, it's going to vary significantly based on the region that you're in, based on the size of the pump. But this will just give you a sense of the numbers that we're talking about. This so is the this is a two HP system actually. A two horsepower system works very well in Bihar because the water table is very high and uh, the average land holding in Bihar is much small. So you know the a two HP system is actually uh, you know very you know probably a decent size system. I, I don't know probably in the earlier uh, presentation you were talking about the 7.5 HP pump which actually caters to an entire village in Bihar. I'm guessing in, in Gujarat perhaps it probably just catering to one farmer. Uh, but if you look at just in terms of the diesel offset, and that's the only metric we're looking at, uh, the payback period on the investment, assuming that it's an upfront cash sale, is four years, a little over four years. What we're not even accounting here, and you know, again, I'm saying this from Bihar, is that Bihar is mostly a single crop or at the max a two crop uh, terrain. People don't practice uh, agriculture in Dharma primarily <coughs> because the water needs typically quadruple, which means the power needs also, you know, significantly increase, which means what was anyways an unviable activity uh, becomes even more economically uh, irrational. So, uh, what we are also not accounting for is that, you know, if the farmer accounts for the income generation from the uh, one additional crop, let's assume that, you know, he is doing a dharma crop now, improve the yields from the same uh, parcel of land, uh, in ability to actually grow cash crops or you know high value crops which require more persistent watering. I think if all of those uh, gains could be quantified, uh, this number of 4.3 could actually come down to less than 2, which I think really makes things uh, very interesting. See, okay, in this discussion, we yeah. will do it. I will tell you the different reason why the same so. Because you will get into it. I have spent 10 years, so I will tell you exactly where the problems are. So that's why I postponed my discussion so that let everybody present. Yeah. Then we come back. Uh, so, so that was you know kind of the economic side of things. Now, how do you make these systems available actually to uh, uh, you know the masses actually? For most part of the 70 odd systems that we installed. Uh, 99% have been cash sales, which means that, you know, as a startup, we can't really provide financing. You know, we have certain limitations at, at an organizational level. And uh, which means that only people or institutions or organizations which can actually afford the upfront uh, investment or in a very capex heavy way will be able to access these systems. That, you know, what we're working towards is how do you actually innovate around the business models to make these systems more affordable. These are just a you know, few things, few ideas that we've been brainstorming around. But pay per use is one concept uh, which is already being practiced, but which is mostly being done by the diesel entrepreneurs. So one, one proposition that we see which should be an easier sell is to actually first get these diesel entrepreneurs to start adopting the system because they very base figured out the whole rental model for uh, irrigation water using their, their DG pump sets. And what we are saying is that, you know, you, the economics makes sense to you. Why don't we replace your asset, the DG set, with a solar pump set? And uh, you anyways recover your costs in less than four years. And, you know, subsequent to that, I mean, it's all, uh, all the income is directly funded to the bottom line. I think you have a time to achieve that. Okay. Uh, because you came late. That's fine. Don't know the rules. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Similarly, we're trying to, uh, you know, introduce lease-based models also, wherein you know the farmer can start, you know, paying some amount towards owning the system, and at say at the end of four years or something, the system is actually transferred to him. All of this will really be augmented once we introduce mainstream financing to the equation, and uh, the VARD and a lot of RMBs in Bihar are working closely with them. That said, we still yet to, you know, make this largely available to a broad audience. Again. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you all understand you know, the value, but this is actually very interesting because these are actually pictures. You know, we all know we, India was facing a near drought situation, and you know, sometime in August, actually, uh, Bihar was on the verge of declaring about 25 districts as drought affected. And uh, this article came out. These are actually pictures from our site in Mubarakpur, and I think Tiwari must have visited these sites. Uh, taken on the 8th of August, these people are actually absolutely mindful, unmindful of the fact that even there's a drought like situation uh, in the state. One thing we've also seen is that there's a, a, a great drive towards growing maize now because maize, you know, the water requirement there is actually high, 
but it's low maintenance. You know, the farmer doesn't have to really put in a lot of effort, and it gets them a lot of uh, gets them a very good price in the market. So again, solar pump is definitely having an impact. And I'm sure uh, would love to have you guys go visit. As a startup, you know, I mean, this is this is more the fancy stuff actually, but. Uh, we are already talking about a double and a triple bottom line. You know, there is an environmental impact also to a, to a solar pump which should be quantified. That said, you know, in a country like India where you are looking at addressing the needs of the population which is trying to make ends meet, you know, it takes a little bit of a backseat but that is definitely there. We are also you know, impacting lives by you know, providing jobs and stuff. Uh, the one thing that we have done and which we feel is very critical right now is to actually get the, the government agencies to really go and adopt. Bihar alone actually gives out 600 crores worth of diesel subsidy to our farmers every year. Our argument to them is that, you know, why don't you just read out the 600 crores into solar pumping? You know, it's just a one-time thing and then you kind of, you know, you've taken them away from uh, diesel dependence for the next uh, at least 15, 20 years. So we've, we've basically really done a lot of capacity building around getting a lot of folks to come and visit our sites understand what the concept is and you know we've had some very interesting applications even outside of irrigation and you know maybe I can just talk about those uh, offline. Uh, I personally believe that subsidies are actually a bit of a bummer. I mean they are not sustainable in the longer run. They actually push the demand out. So farmers are giving us traction saying that yes they see value in the system that they want to invest. Don't invest because they have heard from some politician who's made some announcement somewhere that oh we are coming out with a subsidy program. So there is an intent, there is a desire, there is even a willingness to pay but he says if there is a subsidy program then I might as well wait for it, the subsidy program never comes out. So I feel that you know it's availability of reasonable affordable financing which is the real deal, the real game changer and not subsidy. Uh, this is a little bit about our team, I think we have been as a startup we have been fortunate enough to get a set of bright folks actually, uh, you know from all kinds of educational and uh, uh, you know renowned uh, professional background. So I think that is probably one of the reasons we have done well. Uh, these are some pictures from our installations. Uh, there is one, I believe, somewhere outside, a live installation, so probably would love to have you guys uh, uh, go. Thank you so much. Thanks.